Hey guys, what is worse than seeing a guitar that you just look at and go, you know what, there's no hope for that. I would just throw it right in the trash can myself. You know what's worse than that? Buying a guitar and then figuring out that that's the case. So what's this episode about? Well, it's about this one. This is a junky guitar and you know what? I'll just tell you the story at the bench. Let's hit the bench. All right, so here we are working on this three-quarter size or parter size hobo uh, junk pile is what I've called it. Um, it's an old K. Uh, it's obviously one of the cheaper models, and it's got a sound hole here, but as we said in a different video, um, it's got all kinds of issues, including high string height, a bowed body. Uh, the braces seem to be intact. The bridge is, uh, leaves a lot to be desired, but we're going to start off this thing by figuring out that the acoustic qualities of it aren't going to be good, so we may as well just hop this thing off, and I'll do it the way I usually do, and we'll start off by mounting one of these big, big piezos. You ever seen a piezo that big? Anyway, we'll find a way to put that up underneath here. Now there's a brace running across here, so I'll find a way to get it back behind here where it picks up the acoustics of the body. Now, I want to put a coil pickup, a humbucker on here, um, and I really don't want to be drilling holes across here or whatever, so I need something I can mount to here that's also going to give me an ability to put something on that's kind of creative or junky or yard sale like I always do. But let's talk about, again, we got this out of the way. This is a no-brainer. It goes to a jack and a volume switch, which I'll put in somewhere down here. But at the end of the day, I'm going to need something like possibly this. You get these. They mount to the side of the neck. Um, that one's a little narrow for the side of the neck, but you kind of get the idea. You can order these and then these nail to the side of the neck right there. I don't know if you can see, but they, you run nails in here and this kind of preserves it. We don't have to do anything to mount a humbucker on here or a coil. Next, we have these um, kind of humbuckers. You've seen me use these a lot. I usually break the tab off and hot glue gun them onto something. But um, the idea with these is they've got this tab here, and you can mount that to a pit guard here, like so. And by adjusting the height of your pit guard, whether it's a, a, a regular pit guard or you want to use like a license plate and then use uh, rubber spacers or something to get this up right but that's still going to flop around like this i could also use one of these mgb 750s they're a thin humbucker with a cover this embeds up into about here they have different types of metal and um, different finishes and wood and whatever and that could go right here and you notice that this almost is long enough to mount to the body with a couple of screws and leave the sound hole open. I really don't want to do that. What I want to end up with is something where I can again snap this tab off and mount this right here and not to have to drill a bunch of stuff in here or depend on the structural integrity of this. So I am going to find a way to put something in here that rides this sound hole that becomes the foundation for what's above it that will allow me to mount this on top of that and not have it slipping around or moving. Okay, let's talk about what we're going to need for materials. First, we're going to need a piece of wood that's at least as big as this hole is and at least as thick as the hole, preferably a little bit thicker than the, the top of the guitar. Where would you get some wood? Well, you might have some something laying around here um, in your shop, right? And we're going to use this because this is a fine box, believe me. Next, once I have this piece of wood cut in here and we figure out what that's going to do, I'm going to need something to hold it so it doesn't fall in 
uh, and that something needs to kind of go along with this and it needs to be out of metal so I'm going to make a wrap around that kind of comes like this again it has to be bigger than the hole and come up here to the top of the neck like this so I need something metal that I can flatten out that's hopefully this big from here to here and here to here um, I was kind of looking at this modal uh, smoking tobacco can but I don't think it might be wide enough this way but if I want to do a wrap around up into this area and attach it over to here and then all the way around here that might not be it I might have to go with this flattening out this fine premium saltine the all goodness family cracker so you single people you stick with farmersonly.com this is not a product for you anyway this is about the size I need as you can see it will wrap around again I'll cut it open flatten it out and then cut out what I need so that'll be my metal piece next I'm going to use a ruler and I like the metric system because I can put that there and this is 89 millimeters I can divide that I'm going to take a millimeter off so it just rides this hole right here and it'll be 88 millimeters I'm going to need a compass I'm going to cut 88 and half to 44 and I'm going to put this on a piece of paper at the 44 mark and tilt it up and use this pencil and it will give me exactly what I need in terms of this hole with just a little bit where the piece of wood would drop right in there. Now, as you can see, this is not rocket science, but I think I'll go ahead and use a Northrop Grumman pencil just in case all right so the first thing we're going to do is take our compass no not north south east or west but they call this a compass we're going to put the point at the end and we're going to make this pencil lead hit right at 44. now for you other people that is an inch and and not quite three quarters but more than five eight sixty four seventy seconds write that down for you normal people again the hole is 88 half of 88 is 44 now if I take this was marked at 44 and I just go around like this the next thing you know I missed the one that had the little knob on it and when I go around like this, and as long as I keep that point in the middle, what do you know? There you go. That's the size of the sound hole. Now, I take my chick flick teal scissors, and I cut this out. And I have a template that I can use for any one of these sound holes. And I'm going to take it to the guitar and make sure it fits in there without dropping it down into the hole but this is going to be covered up so it doesn't have to be perfect but yeah there we go i kind of flunked cutting out in preschool all right guitar is back there it is Ooh, what do you know perfect I don't want to drop that in there but that's exactly what we need if this were a piece of wood and it was flush with here it would slide around but it wouldn't come out as long as there was downward pressure on this and as long as this were a little bit thicker than the top but that's what we need we're going to put that away and make a template out of it okay i want to take some fine wood here i want to carefully open this box and i want to carefully destroy it like that okay now since this is going to kind of get in the way here i might need some additional hand tools like I found a really, really good hammer uh, because I'm going to have to cut this part out and um, it's going to be about the same size as, as this, right? So I need to get this out of the way for safety's sake. So I bought myself this really, really good hammer. It's called a Camacho 60 by 6 box.
All right, now that my hammer's put away, I'm going to take my template here. And um, I'm just going to take my Northrop Grumman pencil, my rocket science pencil. And I'm just going to trace around here. So I can take this to my bandsaw and cut me a circle out of this. There we go. All right, there we go. Two minutes later, this fits right in there. It drops down deeper than the top of uh, the guitar, and so it can't slide around. It becomes a base to mount everything to without ruining any of this. A mighty fine job by Hugo Casser. All right, the next thing now is we're going to take a couple pieces of cardstock and we're going to figure out how to build a template for this kind of thing just by making a few loose marks. I want that to come down to at least there. I know that my neck is going to be, I want that piece of metal to be sticking out a little ways from the neck. And so now basically with these two measurements, I can lay this out to do the same thing over here and here. All right, I have cut this piece of paper down here to end where I want the metal to end. I have marked where the side of the fretboard is. I have marked the center of the fretboard. So now if I just roll this over like this and fold on the center and match up all these edges and make a mark over here with my scientific pencil and fold this back into itself like this to get myself a nice crease and then I just cut along this line here like so I'm probably getting a copyright strike from Martha Stewart right about now but whatever and I take this like so mark that up put that in the center make me a mark here one here and then I take this up to the edge make a mark here and one there if I intersect this line and this line and then cut this out where those lines intersect this will fit right down in the neck and give me the size of cover I need. Well, look at that. All I got to do now is round this off a little bit here and here and then up here. I might have to cut just a tad more because that's a little shy up there, but there's my template. All right, there we go. Look at that. That's on cardstock. And what this allows me to do is it's, notice it's a little bit longer up here. It fits snug right there. But you see how it's a little bit longer up here? I can fold those over because I'm going to run a screw in, or two in the end over here. You can't see that yet, but I'll show it to you later. And I've got these rounded off. Now what I need to do is I need to make sure I know where the center of this is. So rather than try and mark all that there, I am going to just, because this was cut nice and straight, I'm going to just fold that. And what do you know, that gives me the middle here, like so, right? Because now what I'm going to try to figure out is where do I need to attach this? So I'm going to take a piece of this painter's tape and I will know that if I put it on there like that I am at the edge of the hole so this is at the edge of the hole and this one here going out there is at the edge of the hole and that means that if I put one 
here, like so, and this one over here, like so. You know what, I'm going to make this one over here a little bit longer because I think I'm fixing to get myself in a corner over here. And I go like this. See that there? That is lined up there. I know that my piece of wood, the center of it, is going to be mounted right there underneath the metal. All right, so now all I got to do is take this and put it on a piece of sheet metal like this. I don't want any seams or anything where I'm working. And you can see that this one will just wrap around and make a mark there, 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 and there. And once I get this cut open and flatten it out, I'll know that I just need to cut this out right here and it'll work perfect. Hey, is that making you sad watching me cut this can up? You know what? You know what makes me sad? Knowing that there's probably three or four million or hundred million of these stuck in landfills throughout the United States and it's going to take them a thousand years to break down. That makes me very sad. Anyway, now all we got to do is flatten this out a little bit. So, hey, premium saltine. You survived the 60s, and now you're going to be important in the year 2020. All right, there we go. Now I'm just going to take my pattern here, make sure it's lined up. I'm, I'm going to miss that, that seam up there. I don't want to be there. I kind of want to be centered up. And then I'm going to just take this Sharpie and go around like so, and make sure that I mark the edge off. And I'll go ahead and cut that off and be ready to mount. All right, then we just take that off and take off. These are some good shears. Malco M12. I mean, they cut a lot of like corrugated metal and stuff that I use for this kind of stuff. Of course, once you're done with this, you want to make sure that you go and your belt sander and make sure that there's no rough edges on this stuff because when you use them cheap metal people can get caught anyway I'm just gonna go around like so and just cut right inside the line of the magic marker that I made with my template. I'm also gonna try to save as much of this as possible and not have a bunch of waste when I cut the corner so I just think ahead a little bit and march right down that line like so. Let me catch up with you here in a minute. Okay I want to show you a little trick here now when you get down to here you want to cut fairly close to the corner and then you just bend this up like this along the line like so. Pop those down just a tad and then you can turn your nippers sideways and hit it that way. Okay now that I've got that cut out fairly close it needs to go a little bit closer to the line. I can take uh, my mallet here and get those edges close and I got a handy tool here. Um, it works good for cigar box neck cutouts and stuff. It's this little belt sander um, and I can take this and knock that down just right down to the line and trace this out and get into the corner. It matters which way the wheels turn and as to which corner you can get into. Make sure it doesn't flop around and you don't push too hard and always make sure that your hands are protected because if you haven't touched these edges up yet they're sharp and next thing you know this thing spins around on and cuts you. But anyway this is a very handy tool. Always wear high eye protection and keep your hands protected. All right, let's have a look. What do you know? Perfect, there's enough room to tie that down there. We're not gonna have nothing in the way of getting any strumming. This will act as kind of like 
a pit guard in a way and then I can fold these over as I need to up here and tack them down. We'll put a couple screws in here and then we know that underneath this will be this. Turn around and give Hugo Casser what he needs. It'll be mounted so this here will actually be underneath here like so and that once that's on there we can run a couple screws in there we can put our pickup right there and that'll all sit right there perfect all right i got some work to do to put this all together of course i'm going to coat this with some kind of satin to make sure nothing scratches off once i get everything done uh, but i snapped that tab off of this flat humbucker and check it out it fits right underneath the strings i have to drill a little hole uh, down to get this wire run back through all the electronics before I put the electronics uh, Before I get this all sealed up of course I'm gonna put the electronics in and use um, This hole to access everything in a couple mirrors and stuff But anyway you get the idea and we'll have another look at this guitar when it's done. All right guys That's it. Well, you know, that's not it. It's never it. I ended up cutting a piece of wood That will go over the round piece of wood that goes over this piece of wood and this metal plate. So over the wood, under the wood, over the metal to grandmother's house we go. Stay up there. We've got these bend over tabs. So we've got step one of a hundred on the guitar that should have never been a guitar. And um, I'll keep you up as we go and there will be a reveal on the end of this thing once it's all hot rotted up. But um, don't forget Give me a like below, subscribe if you haven't, make your comments. I appreciate your comments, especially about what you like to see. I know I'm going down a different trail here. Um, it's not all about hits. It's about finding my audience. So, appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.